Leading lines is one of the three primary rules when it comes to good composition. The other two being rule of thirds and the rule of diagonals, which I will talk about later on in this tutorial. This is a three part tut tutorial. So getting back to this leading lines, what is it? Where do I find them? And what's their purpose? Well, you're actually looking at some at this precise moment as I speak to you. You're looking at this road and you're looking at this canal leading up to a bridge up behind me. That would be classed as a leading line. Um, it can be anything from a ditch, a railway line, a road, a river, anything that creates a line within your image. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line. So why bother? Or what's the purpose of them? Or why even entertain the idea? Or why even class it as a, as a rule? Well, the whole idea is to make what's primarily a two-dimensional medium, being a photograph, uh, more interesting and more engaging. So, to a viewer, uh, let's say the bridge was my point of interest or point of focus in my image. Well, rather than just take a shot of the bridge and kind of nothing else, I would have the road and the canal leading the viewer, the person that's viewing my photograph, I would have it leading them up to the bridge so that it's not immediately apparent that the bridge is the point of interest and the point of focus. So basically what I'm saying is it takes you, the viewer, on a little journey and it engages you more in the actual viewing of the image. Now the other area where it affects too is it'll get, create a, a perception of depth. And that's basically what you're trying to create. Rather than just a flat on image, you're trying to create a perception of depth and to give it this three dimensional look. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you um, several examples uh, of photographs I've taken around the country uh, with leading lines in them. Some of the photographs I will actually highlight the leading lines and the other ones I'll allow you to look at and view and see can you figure it out yourself. And by the end of it, you should have a good handle on the idea of leading lines and more the importance of leading lines. Actually, this bench here is creating a leading line to me from the camera. So let's sit back and have a look at these examples.
I mentioned that there was three primary rules. And I said that the second one was the rule of thirds. So what is the rule of thirds? Well, when you look through the viewfinder of your camera, or if you look at a photograph, it doesn't matter the photograph, any photograph you like, take your pick. And when you look at it, try and imagine that photograph or the view through your viewfinder divided up into nine equal size squares. A bit like the X and O games we used to play as kids. Now where those vertical, vertical lines and horizontal lines intersect, and I will show you examples of this, they, that intersection would be the point of interest within your photograph. And if you apply this rule, it does make it a lot more pleasing to the viewer. And especially when it comes to portraiture. We all know that the eyes in our subject, our model, is absolute the most important part of the photograph. They have to be pin sharp. If they're not, it's not a portraiture. Well, it's not a good portraiture. So, getting the eyes in focus is one trick. But I would also suggest that where these lines, imaginary lines, intersect, if you can get the person's face on the cross section of two of the lines within the rule of thirds, again, it will make the image and the whole composition a lot more engaging and a lot more pleasing to the viewer. So sit back and I'll show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. And again, like the previous tutorial, I will show you um, examples with the lines actually highlighted and drawn in. And last, we come to the rule of diagonals, and by no means the least important. The rule of diagonals is simply, imagine lines going from top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left, across your image, or across your viewfinder as you look through it. What's the purpose of them? Well, you can use them again a bit like leading lines to give you this perception of depth. Because let's face it, we are dealing with a two-dimensional medium, being a photograph. And the whole objective is to try and capture a three-dimensional world that our brains and our eyes can so easily see and appreciate and put it on paper. So that's what you're trying to do. 
In this tutorial, like the previous two, I am going to show you examples of what I mean. And this can be done through uh, portraiture, through landscape, through any photograph you care to take, from the most uninteresting thing to the most beautiful thing you could look at. So sit back, relax, and take a look at these examples and you'll have a greater appreciation for what I'm actually talking about. The three rules we've just looked at in all the examples, <clears throat> they're not set in stone, I give you that, but it is important that you are aware of them and that you do use them where you can. And I would also suggest, if at all possible, to use them in combinations. So you might use, say, the rule of diagonals with the rule of thirds, you might use the rule of thirds with leading lines and so on. The net result will be that your images will be a lot more engaging, be a lot more interesting as I keep stressing here. Plus they will have this perception of dimension, of depth, of 3D and that's what you're trying to affect, to, the effect you're trying to achieve because we are dealing with a two-dimensional medium which is photography and photographs. So to draw a viewer in and hold their interest, that's what the rules are there for. So I hope this has been of help to you.